In 2018, scientists set out to answer one of the world's oldest mysteries. They didn't use submarines or sonar. They used something far more precise, DNA. And what they found in Loch Ness changed the way we think about the monster forever. In June of 2018, a team led by Professor Neil Gemmell from the University of Otago travelled to Scotland with one goal, to catalogue every living thing in Loch Ness. They took more than 250 water samples from every part of the loch, along the shore, at the surface, mid-water, and from the deepest, blackest depths. Every living creature leaves traces of DNA in the water, from skin cells to mucus, scales to waste. This environmental DNA, or eDNA, can be filtered out and sequenced to reveal exactly what's been there. By comparing these sequences to massive reference databases, the team could build a full picture of the loch's biodiversity, without having to catch or even see the animals themselves. When the data came back, it confirmed a few things straight away. First, there was no DNA from any large reptiles. That means no plesiosaurs, no giant water lizards from a lost age. That theory is gone. Second, the team found no sign of the other so-called usual suspects. No Greenland sharks, no sturgeon, no giant catfish. But there was something they did find, a lot of it, eel DNA, and not just in one spot, in almost every single sample from every part of the loch. The European eel is clearly abundant in Loch Ness, and while the study couldn't say how big these eels are, it did leave one possibility open, that perhaps some eels could grow to unusual, even exceptional, sizes. The DNA survey was the most comprehensive biodiversity check ever carried out on Loch Ness. But it wasn't perfect. Even with hundreds of samples, they were still testing just a few hundred litres of water out of billions in the loch. If a creature is rare, only passes through occasionally, or spends most of its time deep in silt, its DNA might not be picked up at all. In fact, the team didn't detect any DNA from otters or seals. Animals we know for a fact visit Loch Ness. That's an important reminder. Absence of DNA doesn't always mean absence of the animal. Sometimes it just means you didn't sample it at the right time or place. And there's another limitation. eDNA can tell you that an eel is present, but it can't tell you if it's a 20 centimeter juvenile or a monster 5 meters long. Size remains a mystery. So if we strip away the legends and stick to what the data actually leaves us with, a few possibilities remain. The first is the most straightforward, large eels. Loch Ness has a healthy eel population, and in nature, outliers happen. Could a rare giant eel explain some of the sightings over the years? The DNA evidence certainly can't rule it out. Another possibility is that occasional visitors, like sturgeon or even seals, could enter the loch and then leave again without being detected during the survey. We know they can pass through the River Ness, and their brief visits might escape notice. And finally, there's the mundane waves, logs, swimming deer, flocks of birds, schools of fish, all of which can, in the right light and conditions, create a fleeting impression of something much larger and stranger. For all its headlines about solving the mystery, the 2018 eDNA study didn't close the book on Loch Ness. It rewrote the chapter headings. It ruled out some long-standing ideas, but left others alive. It gave us a biological baseline of the loch's ecosystem for the first time in history. And it proved that if a large, unknown creature is living here, it's either incredibly rare, incredibly elusive, or not leaving behind the kind of DNA we know how to detect. It's worth remembering that this was the last time Loch Ness was the focus of a large-scale peer-reviewed scientific investigation. Since then, there have been events billed as searches, but few with the same scope, resources, or academic rigour. Most modern efforts make headlines for the spectacle rather than the science, attracting visitors and cameras, but not necessarily producing new, verifiable data. In that sense, the 2018 DNA study remains the benchmark for serious research on the lock. Maybe that's the real lesson here. The Loch Ness Monster might not be a prehistoric survivor. It might not be a giant fish. But it could still be a story born from the meeting point between unusual wildlife, human perception, and the deep, 
cold, silent waters of the Highlands. And while science didn't say there's nothing there, it did tell us exactly what's there, what isn't, and what we still don't know. In the Highlands, that's about as close to an answer as we're ever likely to get. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if there's a Loch Ness subject you would like us to cover, just ask in the comments. See you on the next deep dive into the Loch Ness mystery.